How did it come to this? Short answer, I wanted to play Funny Purple Dragon Game. Long answer... Oh god. I didn't even want to own an original Xbox at the start of this, by the way. You see, at the start of this, this was just me trying to use the backwards compatibility on my Xbox 360. A very cool feature. I'd frequently look through the list of compatible games uh, to make sure that the original Xbox games I wanted to play on 360 would, well, be playable. Since only a certain selection of the original Xbox library is playable on 360. Sometimes the backwards compatibility is glitchy, however. The game I wanted to play was The Legend of Spyro, A New Beginning. Why this game specifically? Uh, nothing special. I'm a Skylanders fan who wants to explore the rest of the Spyro franchise, starting with the Legend series. Also, I was requested to play this on stream a very, very long time ago. So I got a copy on eBay and put it into my 360. That was my first mistake. The game arrived in May, and my plan was to play it shortly after I made my third Crash of the Titans stream. I even mentioned it at the end of the live stream. Um, unlike, unlike the past few streams where I had no fucking clue what I was doing, I actually have like a good plan for like the next few streams, so um, uh, I guess look forward to that. Um, and I don't know if I'll announce this on my DeviantArt or in like the community tab, but um, I, uh, I did recently get a game that I want to stream, so you know, we'll um, We'll see that if, if, if the disc works. I haven't, I haven't actually tested if the disc works yet. <laughs> As I just implied, uh, after the stream, I put it into my 360 to see if the disc works, and well, I got this message. Uh oh. Apparently, there's this one step in the process that I seem to have not noticed. So, to play an original Xbox game on an Xbox 360, Specifically on the model which I use, which is the Xbox 360 Slim, you need an Xbox 360 Slim hard drive. I did not know this, and so in my quest to play The Legend of Spyro, a new beginning for Xbox, I bought a hard drive off eBay. Well, I tried to. Ended up waiting over a month, and when it was a week past the expected delivery date, I checked the progress and apparently, there was some kind of complication with the listing, so they had to cancel it. Don't worry, I was refunded, but that means I have to get another one of these bastards. So I go over to eBay again, fuck that makes it sound like eBay's location, and I go to purchase another hard drive, which means, yup, almost another month of waiting for that bitch to arrive. I just want to play a game about a fucking purple dragon, why are they putting me through all this? Actually, by the way, I'd like to point out one of the listings I found online, which uses this as one of their product pictures. For one, who on God's green earth holds a controller like that? They look like a fucking SCP, they're scaring me. And two, those are fucking PS4 controllers. Wrong console generation and wrong console, what the fuck? Anyways, the hard drive arrived after three or so weeks, and I was very excited to finally try it out. So, I go over to put the hard drive in, start up my 360, and... Wait, where the fuck do I insert this thing? Yeah, so apparently you're supposed to rip open this side part here. Uh, a little fun fact, when I was 12, this Xbox 360 fell onto the floor, and these two plates fell off of it, and I thought I broke it. Nope, this is just a feature! So anyways, I put it back in so I can finally deal with this mess of plugs, and boot up my 360! Uh, you okay there, bud? Yeah, so, not gonna lie, this extended startup was unnerving as fuck when I first saw it. I've always been used to the Xbox 360 startup, you know, the one where it's like, what? And then, like, two seconds pass, and you're playing Bioshock Infinite or some shit. Having this startup just stay there menacingly, I was very uncomfortable the entire time. And by the way, this took an entire four minutes to start up after I inserted the hard drive. So, my Xbox 360 was much slower whenever I tried to perform certain actions. And when I'd look up to my storage devices, it labeled the hard drive as unformatted. Meaning I would have to format the device. I have no idea what that means, honestly. But it would require me to delete everything on the hard drive. 
Now, since I got this second hand and there was nothing of value to me on this hard drive, I didn't really care that much about deleting it, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't at least a bit disappointed to delete its content, since I was actually excited to see if the previous owners had anything on it, but there didn't seem to be on anything on there anyways. And the hard drive still wasn't working. Got an error message saying it couldn't be formatted. I tried searching this shit up online and it gave me a good old, have you tried turning it off and on again? Thanks. One source I found on Xbox's support page told me that it could be an issue of not inserting it correctly and that I should make sure to hear a click when I insert it. Bitch, does that sound like a fucking click? Even worse, uh, even though I had this hard drive, I still couldn't play The Legend of Spyro A New Beginning. It gave me an error message saying I needed to reinstall the game. It's a fucking disc, what is there to reinstall? Did this get any updates? And after trial and error, and error, and error, and so on and so forth, I realized this hard drive just doesn't work. I... <laughs> I just want to play one game, what the fuck? I'm really hoping that there's some techie thing I'm missing out on and this hard drive actually does work, but... Uh, yep, this seems to be a dud. So now I just have this 250 gigabyte paperweight with me. It slows down my 360, so I have no reason to even have it in my console. It's currently, I keep it on top of my shelf display next to my melatonin. What the fuck do I even do with this hard drive now? I don't fucking know. Like, there's not even anything funny I can do with it. It's just a black square. It serves literally zero purpose. Okay, so you guys are probably just assuming that I just went to eBay and, well, just bought an Xbox. And shockingly, there's a bit more to it than that. Buying a whole ass original Xbox never really came across my mind. As this would be a big ass motherfucker, and I don't even know where I would put that when I'm not using it. As of making this video, I still have no fucking clue where to put this. But what would I do then? Not play Legend of Spyro a new beginning? No, fuck that. I didn't have a plan B if the hard drive didn't work. I mean, my only idea would have been to take a gamble and buy another one hoping that it would work. But that would be my third attempt getting a hard drive. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, I, I, uh, I found something better. So, to set up some context, I went out with some friends sometime, and on the walk home, I checked out a thrift store. I wasn't planning on buying anything, matter of fact, I didn't, at the time. But when I was there, one thing did catch my eye. A copy of Happy Feet on the Nintendo DS. This is, this is related to the story, I swear. You see, I've been planning on hacking my 2DS so that I could dump the ROMs onto my laptop and play them on stream, and I thought, damn, this would be a cool game to live stream. Again, didn't buy it, but made a mental note so I could go over and buy it later. Two days later, I go there again and some motherfucking gremlin bought it. I'm sorry, but who the actual fuck bought a copy of Happy Feet on the Nintendo DS? I'm genuinely asking, because unless you're some fiend like me who's a glutton for shovelware, why the fuck would anyone want this? So anyways, a friend of mine shows up to my house completely unannounced shortly before we went to the thrift store. So now I had someone else going with me. When we went back, we didn't see any Happy Feet copies, but the friend paid closer attention to some of the other stuff they had. Their game selection uh, wasn't the best. It was just your basic FIFA games and other shovelware. But in terms of the actual gaming hardware and accessories, they were pretty goaded, honestly. I didn't get anything from there at the time, because if they didn't have Happy Feet on the DS, I wasn't interested. But this motherfucker I was with managed to get a whole ass Wii U from there. They also had an original Xbox there, so I knew what I had to do next. Well, actually, I didn't. I went to the thrift store the day before the hard drive actually arrived. Yeah, the timeline's a bit screwy here but I want to convey my decision-making process. I didn't buy the OG Xbox, not at the time at least, just walked home with the friend as we talked about our great find, the Wii U. The friend actually owns an original Xbox of his own already. When I told him I was considering going back and getting the OG Xbox for stream, he assumed I was talking about streaming OG Xbox games with him. 
<laughs> Sorry, bro, but uh, the Legend of Spyro A New Beginning is a single player game only. <laughs> Maybe we could play Dawn of the Dragon. <laughs> I'm such a fucking jackass, oh my lord. <laughs> Anyway, so the hard drive arrived the next day, and uh, you know the story. Uh, I got pissed off, it didn't work, said fuck it, metaphorically, and went over to buy the Xbox. It was only $50 Canadian, so honestly, not that bad of a deal. But I was getting it from a thrift store, so of course, there's a bit of that risk of it being from some fuckweed who wanted to get rid of faulty hardware. Though, I have a lot of faith in our society, and I didn't see why someone would donate something like that to a thrift store. But the cashier had less faith than I did. When I wanted to buy it, she said, we don't do returns for these. She told me that twice. And afterwards, she pointed out that she told me that twice. So, basically, what she was telling me was, if this doesn't work, get fucked. But you motherfuckers know I can't do my main man, The Legend of Spyro, a new beginning on Xbox Dirty like that. So I had to take the gamble and buy the thing to test if it worked. So, $50 down the drain later, and I am the proud owner of an original Xbox. I went to set it up and noticed the power cable for the original Xbox is kind of similar to my Xbox One S, which immediately scared me because the power cable for the S is flimsy as fuck. But it seemed to work just fine. But there was one issue. What the fuck are these? I knew that my TV supported AV cables, so that wasn't much of an issue. Finding out where the fuck these go was a problem. I thought they went in here. I I'm sorry! I'm sorry! I'm Gen Z! I didn't grow up with the Wii! I've never used these! I had to get my dad to help me to try to find where these were, and uh... Huh. Alright. So I plug in the cables, and... Yeah, I, I think I just had an orgasm. One complaint I do have with the Xbox, though, is... Why do they emphasize the eject button so much? Like, it's the bigger button, and when you power it on, it lights up. Not the power button? Like, just, why? These should be reversed, I don't understand it. But, hey, that meant I could press the eject button a lot sooner and be met with... Okay, that's pretty cool. So, the previous owner of this must have left their old Madden disc in here and forgot about it. Relatable. So hey, cool added bonus. I got Madden 08, funny Scott the Waz game. Yeah, I uh, thought this would make for a funny stream, but at the same time, I don't, I don't know dick about football. Yeah, the copy of Madden is pretty cool, but I think I'll just put it in my miscellaneous disc holder now. But to give it some dignity, I'll put it next to my Happy Feet DVD. Nah, I'm just playing with you guys. I'm putting it next to my copy of Alpha and Omega, The Legend of Sawtooth Cave. Only Kinect Adventures gets that privilege. Anyways, time to gush about the original Xbox. Oh my fucking god, look at this motherfucker! It is so fucking cool! Like, I swear, this absolute unit is thick with four Cs! God damn! Bro, the sleek ass fonts, the large size, that shape, I'll be entirely deadass, it's kind of intimidating, but I love it. It is gushing with personality, and that's before you even turn it on. Everybody knows the iconic Xbox startup, but just... Oh my lord, please have my firstborn child, Xbox. Just this atmosphere. Despite being born in 2006, I adore the early 2000s culture and aesthetics. Everything we have now is just so watered down by comparison. Typically, the video games are supposed to be the immersion, but I'm already immersed into the feeling of... Whatever this is, just by turning on the console. And stuck at the date selection. I'm not entirely sure if I mentioned this earlier, but, uh, yeah, uh, when I bought the Xbox, it, it didn't come with a controller. Uh, so I'm currently stuck at the date selection until I actually get a controller. But currently, yeah, this is, this is fucking cool, bro. So now I focus on some other hardware bullshit I'll need. First off, a controller. I kind of can't do anything without one. 
And because I'm a cheap bastard who doesn't want to spend ungodly amounts of money just to play The Legend of Spyro A New Beginning, my plan is to either A, get a third-party controller off Amazon, or B, get one from a used game store. First off, I called the used game store to see what their prices were. They said $30 Canadian. Then I checked Amazon, and they were selling third-party controllers for about $10 cheaper. And I really considered getting one off of Amazon, until I started reading the reviews, and people were like, yeah, this is fine, just sometimes inputs don't register, or the joystick drifts. And I decided to think for the long term. So, going to the used game store it is. Once we had it there, it was pretty cool. Saw some games I want to stream someday, but other than that, just got my controller. When I went there, the employee asked which version of the controller I wanted, saying, the Duke or the better one. And another guy in line looked at me and said, the better one. And hey, it ended up being $22. Awesome. The other guy in line asked if I had any games for the original Xbox. And that was proof that a used games is the only place where I can look at a 40 to 50 year old man in the eyes and say that I own a copy of The Legend of Spyro, A New Beginning for the original Xbox with no hesitation. Five stars would go again. With the controller now in my possession, I can finally start setting things up. So I enter the date and... Oh wait, what the fuck? Yeah, it uh, goes to show that I'm not really used to consoles from this era. I was expecting some menu, like what the Xbox 360 has. But nah, they just kinda load the game. Okay, that's cool too, I guess. So, what does the Xbox button do? Nothing, it, it doesn't do anything. It's not even a fucking button! I was under the assumption that this was a button, but no, it's just... It's just a lie! Why the fuck does the 2 controller emphasize the X so much? It's not a fucking button! Why? Why? Yeah, that's enough Madden 08 for now. Anyways, onto the controller itself. This is not your traditional Xbox controller. Once they had the Xbox 360 format, they kind of just used that forever. Hell, the Xbox One controller has undergone very few changes in the past decade. And I respect that since the Xbox One controller is absolutely fire. Perhaps I could do a video about Xbox controllers. I don't know. My first mistake with this was holding it like a modern Xbox controller. The left and right buttons are over here for some dumbass reason. So the more natural position is to only focus on the triggers. But that leaves one issue about this Xbox unattended. If I want to live stream this, then, well, filming my TV isn't going to get me anywhere. Now, I do have a capture card, which I've used for live streams over a year now. Hell, I even used it in this video. But the thing is, this is for HDMI. And as we've established, this is a console for old people, and it does not support HDMI. So, our final pit stop with being able to livestream our beloved The Legend of Spyro, a new beginning for the original Xbox, is an AV to HDMI converter. Uh, Self-explanatory, really. And fortunately or unfortunately, this one is the least complicated step in the process. I bought one off Amazon and it arrived shortly after. Uh, although, accidentally ordered two. So, I plug these motherfuckers in, dear god my setup just got more hellish with this abundance of wires, and... It works! It fucking works! I finally have my full OG Xbox setup ready! So, moment of truth, time to put the Legend of Spyro a new beginning in. Let's fucking go! Well, I actually tested the disc after I got the controller, but I like to have a bit more suspense. You know how it is. But I was extremely thrilled either way. Hell, there was even some past save files on it. I don't know if the save data is saved to the console or the disk, I'm pretty sure the console. Uh, so if this is saved to the console, then that is one hell of a cool coincidence that the previous owners of this Xbox played it. Hell, one of the save files has 9 hours on it, that's pretty cool. All the save files were listed at 2002, and I thought that was so cool we were playing it at that time until I remembered that The Legend of Spyro a New Beginning released in 2006. <laughs> Oh wait, one cool thing for me to go over, uh, the save data on the system. At first, I thought there weren't any, but I accidentally opened it on one of the menus and, whoa, the previous owners of this console actually played a fuck ton of games on it. And there were some really strange yet fascinating game choices they had. Or maybe there were multiple previous owners, I have no idea. Either way, these are very interesting to think about. The dates on these are wildly inconsistent. 
as I mentioned with The Legend of Spyro, sometimes the dates were throughout the 2000s, with a couple of them being from the early 2020s, which is absolutely wild to me. In terms of the games themselves, you just got your basic FIFAs or other previously mentioned Maddens. The latter of which had an astonishing amount of playtime? Maybe these are achievements? I honestly don't know what these circles represent. Maybe they're save data, achievements, or both. But you also have some funnier games, a lot of licensed tie-in stuff like Over the Hedge or The Cat in the Hat with a concerning amount of progress. They also seem to have bought multiple Crash Bandicoot games, based. James Bond stuff, DC, Marvel, Namco Museum, which got me hyped, but there seems to be no progress on that. A Spider-Man game, which was played at 3.30 a.m. apparently. I really hope that date is accurate, because the idea of someone playing it at 3 a.m. is funny as hell to me. I just want to point out this Nightmare Before Christmas game, because the icons remind me of that eyebrow raise meme, and that is amazing. <laughs> So, with this saga concluded, does that mean I'll finally get to play The Legend of Spyro A New Beginning? No. Well, not exactly. As I've said a couple of times, I bought this game to livestream it. So you fuckers know I'm gonna livestream this bastard. I'll be streaming this at August 6th, so I'd love for you guys to join me. If you're someone who grew up with The Legend of Spyro, or the original Xbox, I'd love to hear any stories you guys have surrounding either. I stream other weird older games if you're interested. This entire video is just my first impressions of the original Xbox, uh, so all this is an appetizer. I did try to play Madden a bit, but I'll be honest, the game is confusing as fuck, so I couldn't play it for more than 5 minutes. Besides, sports games aren't really my thing unless it's for the casual market like the Kinect or Wii. I'm a casual gamer who is obsessed with gaming culture, I think video games are cool, but that doesn't mean I'm good at them. <laughs> So, live streaming The Legend of Spyro will be me getting more familiar with the Xbox control layout and the feel of the system. Playing this on an HD TV may not be the most purest way to play these games, and for that I apologize. I am missing out on the full experience because of which, but I still want to have fun with this Xbox. Please, if you have any gaming recommendations, please do tell me them. I was surprised at the amount of original Xbox titles that seem quality but I've never heard of. Your recommendations don't have to be anything too fancy, it can be a licensed game or shovelware. I don't own a PS2 or a GameCube, so this also includes games that released on multiple platforms but also had a release on Xbox. Honestly, just anything you guys enjoyed growing up with? It's just so cool to now be the owner of three generations of Xbox. I basically own all of the important ones now. <laughs> Although dumping the Xbox is an important piece of hardware is arguable in my opinion. I think that it's clear that I have a lot of brand loyalty towards the Xbox. Some of my earliest memories are when I was 5 years old playing Just Dance, Connect Adventures, or Lego Indiana Jones 2 on my Xbox 360. And I still play that system constantly, both in my free time and on live streams. It's my go-to console. I'd also like to thank you for watching this. I don't typically do videos of this format, despite being a gaming channel for live streams. I don't usually do videos like these. And of course, if the video does well enough, I'll try doing some other videos like this. I have a few other Xbox related videos I'd like to make, uh, again, due to my bias. And I'd have a fun time doing something like this again. Well, minus the headaches needed to invest in all the techie bullshit just to get this one game running for a live stream. Uh, oh well, I'm just rambling at this point. I'm not very good at outros, if you couldn't tell. So do all that generic like and subscribe bullshit to boost the algorithm in my favor if you enjoyed this. And I hope you have a good day. Later! Oh yeah, by the way, a couple of side notes before I end this video. While I was editing this, I went on a trip to Victoria. I'll do a vlog on that separately. But when I was there, I visited a used game store and they had some original Xbox games. I haven't played any of them yet, but I got three of them and I'll show off one of the things I got from there now since I feel it might be something you guys would request me to get. Jet Set Radio Future, bitches! Also bundled with Sega GT 2002, which is cool, I guess, but you motherfuckers know what I got this for. Currently, I'm planning to play this after my Legend of Spyro livestream, but I wanted to show this off. And my second side note, I'm doing a little summer challenge on my channel called the Canvas Challenge, where at the end of my live streams, typically the hour and a half to two hour mark, I draw something requested by chat. So if you join the stream and it's R instead of gameplay, just keep that in mind. 
And yeah, that's all I have to say. Incredibly excited to now be the owner of an original Xbox and to be able to stream this game, so I hope you enjoyed the video. And of course, as I said earlier, I don't really have the most experience with videos of this manner, so if you have any feedback or criticism with the video, uh, please do tell me any. Thank you!